Because I've taken this very strict position of obeying the Constitution and not going to war needlessly and not going when it's undeclared, uh, some would say, well, you don't support the troops. But you know, guess what? When you look at the, the fundraising here in the last quarter, and you look at where the money is going from the active duty and the veterans, guess what? Our campaign received more money from active duty military people than all the other candidates, including the Democrats, put together. We received more than three times as much as a certain senator who runs on a strong national offense. But we... But, you know, his position, and I'm sure you don't know who I'm talking about, his position is to stay in Iraq for a hundred years if necessary. Immediately, Immediately after World War II, you know, after World War I, they tried to get us in the League of Nations, but there was an old right position back then. Old right conservatives said, no, we don't want that type of an entangling alliance. And rightfully and, and wisely, our country stayed out of it. But lo and behold, after World War II, uh, we ended up joining the United Nations. That, of course, is the reason I think we ought to be out of the United Nations. <laughs> but what was one of the first things the United Nations did? You know, it was, supposed to be, it was supposed to be a peacekeeping commission, and yet the very first thing, it got our government and our Congress to go along for a war in Korea that was undeclared under a UN banner. I do not believe this country should ever go to war under a UN resolution. And just think about how this war has drained us. We lost uh, a lot of men uh, during that time, uh, and some never came home. Some are still missing. That's one thing we should never do. Not only should we take care of our veterans, we should always make sure that we always find out those that have been left behind. But there's always a cost, and the cost continues. The cost of the Korean War and the UN resolution that got us involved is still going on to the tune of billions of dollars now. So when we come around to replacing the current foreign policy with a constitutional foreign policy, and we end our war and we start bringing our troops home, not only will we bring them home from the Middle East, we're going to bring them home from Korea and Japan and Europe as well. There are a lot of benefits by this. I believe our national defense would be stronger. Our equipment now is in bad shape. We're under more serious threat by terrorism because we're, we have invaded other countries and we occupy their territories and we appear to be stealing their oil. No wonder they're upset with us. But even those who say that we must stay forever, even those who suggest even if we have to stay 100 years just because we've been 60 years in, in Korea, it's an irrelevant argument because it's coming to an end and that's what, every, that's what the markets are telling us today. All great empires and great nations end because they extend themselves too far. The Soviet system collapsed because they did exactly that and they collapsed internally for economic reasons. And that is what we're on the verge of doing. So even for those out there who say, no, we have to stay forever and we have to, and it's so important, it's not relevant because we don't have the money. We're flat out broke and we have to quit. We have to save the money.
When we went into Korea and then had to fight the Chinese, that was a military war and it was very dangerous, of course, and, and it's still ongoing. But what kind of situation are we in today? Because we have weakened ourselves internally. Because we are now and not a producer, but we are a consumer. Now we have to borrow. We're the greatest debtor of the world. We owe $2.7 trillion around the world. The truth is, is that today, Right now, today, the Chinese are more in control of our economy than we are. Because if they did not loan us the money, we could not fight those wars and, 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 uh, and take care of our domestic needs. So that is the reason we have to get our house in order. And the best place to start is, of course, undoing our empire and getting all our troops home. Just think of the economic benefits by just bringing the troops home and having the bases here at home and ha having our naval ports here. We are closing down so many of them around the country. Immediately, just think, all our military personnel would be spending their money here and not overseas. That would give us a boost to the tune of billions of dollars. But it doesn't make any sense for us to tax the American people. We are taxed to fight these wars. That makes no sense whatsoever. We go over and for no good reason we start bombing countries. If they don't obey us and we want them to do our bidding, we bomb them. If they do our bidding, we give them foreign aid. You know, it makes no sense. Why don't we have a third option? Why don't we just be friends with them? Just be friends with the country. But we, we as a people are taxed to go over there and bomb the bridges and blow up their infrastructure and then we feel badly. Then we tax the American people again to go over and rebuild their infrastructure and rebuild their bridges. I would say, let's take care of our bridges right here at home. The reason I talk about the foreign policy is because I think it's the most dangerous policy we have. We have domestic policy and overspending, but foreign policy in the time of war introduces the notion that we are conditioned as a people that we're supposed to, be a, we're supposed to give up our liberties in the time of war. And we're supposed to give up our liberties in the time of a, of a threat of terrorism. And now we're told the war on terrorism is forever, and therefore they expect us to be humble to the point where we accept this idea that we have to sacrifice our liberties. The conclusion that I have firmly come to is that you never have to give up any liberty to be safe and secure. The one thing that we have to make sure we understand if we want to be safe and secure in our homes and in our businesses is to make sure we understand the Second Amendment. But cutting the spending overseas gives us an opportunity, gives us some time. Because if we continue, the, the economic crisis will hit. The elderly and the middle class and those who depend on fixed incomes are getting poorer every year. The inflation rate is much higher than the government will admit. The inflation rate for most individuals, when you add up the cost of energy and medical care and education, could be 10 or 15 percent. It's never the same for everybody. But what did Social Security recipients get last year? They got a 2 percent raise. So they're losing 8 or 10 percent a year. That's why they're unhappy. But that happens to all of us. All the middle class, will, their standard of living is going down today.